When the battle finished, Rasulullah turned around to Imam Ali. He said to him, Oh Ali, take me to the body of Hamza. Yes. At that moment, that was one of the most difficult moments in the life of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Because he turned around to the Imam, they began to walk towards their uncle and their best friend. Yes. They began to walk. What had taken place when Hamza had died, Wahshi took his body and Hind was next to him. And Hind turned around and she said, I want you to rip the chest of Wahshi open for me. He had ripped the chest of Hamza wide open and then he had taken the liver out. She began to chew the liver and eat the liver of Hamza having barbecued it. She had taken the liver, barbecued the liver, and then she began to eat it. And she had ensured that the whole chest was open, so the Prophet sees the most difficult of sights. The Holy Prophet reached there, he came towards there, he sat down, and he began to cry for his uncle Hamza. Yes. Because imagine how hard it is for the Holy Prophet to see someone who he loves lying on the ground with his body ripped into pieces. It must be the most difficult moment. There is no moment like that at all when a Prophet sees his beloved uncle lying there on the ground. And he didn't want to leave the body of his uncle because imagine the pain that he was in. He ordered that his uncle's body is buried there in the land of Uhud where it is today. And then when the Prophet returned to Medina, he was crying and crying, but he noticed that when he was going past people's houses, nobody was crying for his uncle Hamza. Question, did the Prophet say, you don't need to cry, it's better not to cry, crying will not get you anywhere, crying is extreme? No, the Prophet turned around in a famous statement, why, are, why is there no one crying for my uncle Hamza? My uncle who gave so much for your religion, if it wasn't for his sacrifice, none of you would be Muslims. He's telling the community at the time that if it wasn't for the sacrifice of my uncle, which one of you would be a Muslim? And now I see that none of you are crying. I order that every woman in Medina cries for my uncle. This is therefore a sunnah of the Holy Prophet when we cry in Masa'ib al Hussein, Because there are certain people who may turn around and say that why do we cry? What's the need for crying? Let's just have a lecture and let's go home. If it was that the case, then Rasulullah built a community of robots or of human beings. Yes, I'm a mixture of intellect and emotion. I will listen to an intellectual analysis, but also I have a heart. And the heart breaks when it hears about the saints of Allah who have given their lives away. The heart is in pain when it hurts about someone who gives his life away for the message of the religion of Islam. The Prophet set a sunnah. What was it? The sunnah was that you cry whenever you hear the masaib of a martyr in the name of the religion of Islam. Did he turn around and say that it's okay if you don't cry? No, he said, try and cry. And that's why Imam Sadiq later says, whoever cries or pretends he's crying for Aba Abdullah. Yes. What was the point? The point was that a Muslim should have emotion. Their heart should soften when they hear about those people who gave their lives away for the religion. Therefore, number one, the Holy Prophet made sure that everybody cried for his uncle. Number two, then you'd have Fatima al Zahra go to visit the grave of her uncle every Thursday night. Yes. Fatima al Zahra would not just stay home. No, she used to love her great uncle Hamza. Every Thursday from Medina to Uhud, Fatima would walk alone to Uhud. Yes. And she would go and sit there. And not just sit there. You know what she would do? She'd get the dust of Uhud, the clay of Uhud, and make a tasbih with it. Yes. Why? Because the clay that surrounds the grave of someone who died in the way of Allah has many benefits for the human being. That grave, that clay is what? It has a curing effect, firstly. Secondly, it is holy dust because it's around the person who gave his life away for the religion. Father of Zahra would sit by the grave and she would collect that clay and she'd make a tasbih and go back and do sibha 
and she would do the sabha in honor of Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib. It showed you that Al Muhammad, when someone dies to them, the person is not dead. Rather, he is alive. For he died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His clay is to be honored. His mourning is to be remembered. And that's why you found that the Holy Prophet would continue to remind everybody about the martyrdom of Hamza. Question, if that killer of Hamza who ripped open the chest of Hamza, if he came to Rasulullah years after, would Rasulullah open the door of forgiveness for him or no? This is a major question. Why? Because that would be a test. Imagine someone killed someone who you love. Imagine someone wronged someone who you love. Do you have forgiveness in you or no? One thing Al Muhammad teach us. Forgive people in the way you'd want Allah to forgive you on the day of judgment. Yes. The biggest test for the Holy Prophet came when he conquered Mecca. The moment he conquered Mecca, many people came to meet the Holy Prophet. One of them came. He said, oh, Prophet of God, forgive me. He said to him, are you Wahshi? He said to him, yes, I am. He said, tell me, how did you mutilate the body of my uncle? It's as if he wanted to hear the masaib of his uncle years afterwards. You'd think that the uncle died when? Five years before Mecca was conquered. But still, tell me, how did you mutilate the body of my uncle? He said to him that we ripped the chest of your uncle. We opened it up. We took the liver. And that's why Bibi Zainab says in her khutbah in Sham, how can I hope for sympathy and compassion from someone whose grandmother chewed the liver of the nobles and he was born from the flesh of the martyrs, yes? He said to him that, he said, but Muhammad, forgive me, I have changed. This is the beauty of the Prophet right now. He could easily turn around and say, get out of my face, I never want to see you again. Or he could say to him, do not worry, go back and become a better person, yes? The message therefore was what? That even though his uncle is so beloved to him, he, when the person who killed him came up to him, he still tried his hardest to open a door for him to reflect on what he's done. To ask Allah for forgiveness for what he's done. That Wahshi, sadly, later on, some narrations mention him becoming a drunkard and not honoring his tawbah. And that's the sad thing of this world, that sometimes you open the oppressor a door of repentance, but they don't take advantage of it. But that person was given the chance, and they never took advantage of it. Therefore, you found that that death of Hamza remained a death in the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Whenever he'd remember any musibah, Hamza would be the musibah that he'd remember. And that's why you find even Imam al Hussein and Imam Zayn al Abideen, before they died, they mentioned Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib. How did Imam al Hussein mention? You found Imam al Hussein alayhi salam came out in his final moments in Karbala. When he came out on the battlefield, Abbas lying by the Farat with no one to look after his body. Ali al-Akbar's piece is on the ground. Qasim in his mother's lap. And the six-month-old baby with his neck ripped into pieces. Abba Abdullah came out on that particular moment all alone. May Allah never show you being alone like Abba Abdullah was in those moments. And when he came out, he said something that I will never forget. This is something unique. He said to them, is Hamza not my great uncle? Yes, you who've come to kill me. All of you revere Hamza, don't you? You all love Hamza. Is Hamza not my great uncle? Is Ja'far al-Tayyar not my uncle? Yes. Is Fatima al-Zahra not my mother? <laughs> These tears tonight, these are all intercession for you on the day of judgment. Remember Rasulullah said, why does no one cry for my uncle? <laughs> so he said, is Fatima not my mother? Is Ali ibn Abi Talib not my father? Is Rasulullah Muhammad not my grandfather? Yes. Why did Imam al Hussein mention this? Because firstly to Imam al Hussein. Sayyid al-Shuhada before him was Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib. Yes. Secondly, he wanted to remind them why Aba Abdullah has not come to fight. Aba Abdullah has come to remind you of your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That maybe some of you have forgotten your duties. Maybe some of you have become negligent. Maybe some of you have sinned wrongfully. 
Then remember who I am. Yes, Hamza is my uncle. Then the second time Hamza was remembered was in the court of Yazid and Sham. Yes. And in that court of Yazid and Sham, you found Imam Zain al Abidin when he gave his famous khutbah. Yes. And when he began the khutbah, he made it clear. What did he say? He said, Allah has granted us six and given us excellence in seven. Allah has granted us knowledge, forbearance, eloquence, bravery, generosity, and the believer's love for us. That Allah has granted us six. But then he said, Allah has granted us seven. From us is the Nabiul Mukhtar. From us is Muhammad. From us is Asadullah wa Asad Rasul. From us is the Lion of Allah and the Lion of His Prophet. Yes. From us is As Siddiq, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. From us is Tayyar, Ja'far al Tayyar. From us are Sibta Hadihil Ummah, yes, the youths of this Ummah, Hassan and Hussein. And from us is the Mahdi, Mahdi Yuhadihil Ummah. You found therefore that wherever Al Muhammad would go, they'd always remember Hamza and the sacrifice of Hamza. The question arises that both Hamza and Imam Al Hussein are known as Sayyid al Shuhada. Then what are the differences and what are the similarities? In terms of the similarities, both of them died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a clear similarity. That both of them died in the way of Allah. The second similarity, both of them died in their love of Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. The third similarity, both their bodies were mutilated by their enemies. Yes, I leave this to all of you now. May Allah give all of you salvation. If you are Rasul Allah, it was hard for you to see Hamza's body into pieces. Come look at the hooves of the horses when they dug into the chest of Abi Abdullah. It's one thing a human being ripping a chest open. It's another when a horse kicks the chest around Karbala. Yes, that's another of the similarities. However, there are certain differences between them. Them, which make Abu Abdullah Sayyid al Shuhada forever. What are the differences that exist between them? Hamza died having drunk water. Abu Abdullah died with none. Yes, that's the first difference. The first of them and the most minor of them. Hamza died with his head on his body. Abu Abdullah died with his head severed from his body. Ya Allah. Hamza died with his head on his body while Abu Abdullah died without his head on his body. <laughs> Hamza had Rasulullah to bury him. Abu Abdullah lay on the ground for three nights with no one to bury his holy body. <laughs> <laughs> Ya Allah, never allow my body to be buried on the same night. How can I be buried on the same night when the son of Fatima Zahra died with his body having no one to bury it? But I'm not going to stop there. There's a reason he's called Sayyid al-Shuhada. Hamza had Rasul Allah to protect his orphans. Tell me who protected the orphans of Abi Abdullah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Hamza had someone to look after his sister. Uh, tell me who slapped the sister of Abi Abdullah. <laughs> Oh Hamza, you at least had Rasul Allah to look after your sisters. Uh, come and look at Zainab and Kulthum when they walk the streets of Sham. Uh, one of them calling out Wa Abbas, and the other calling out Wa Hussein. Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'oon.